Hello everyone, I welcome you all to today's uh, session wherein we will be discussing uh, a question of CAT level difficulty. So today I have uh, brought a question from the numbers uh, topic right, which is uh, one of the important topics that you have uh, in your CAT examinations in the previous times. right? So if I talk about some 10 years, 15 years ago, the importance of numbers was even more right, as compared to what it is today. Uh, but again, having said that, the importance of numbers can again come back anytime. So, thus keeping that in that thing in mind, uh, this is one area, numbers, base systems, and all that we should not ignore. Right? We should try to learn the concepts here, learn the techniques, the methods here, and know know the process of solving the questions. So, we have one question on that line. You can pause the video now, give this question a try, and then you can listen to the discussion that happens. Here. I will be starting with the discussion now. It says uh, when a natural number p is expressed in base 2 or 3 or 5, base 2, base 3, base 5. The leading digit is a. Leading digit means the first digit. So, digit a followed by something. And the ending digit is b. If a is not 0 and p is less than 50, so number p should be less than 50, find the number of values that p can take. So, how many values can p take? All right. If the leading digit is A and the ending digit is B, A is not 0 and P is less than 50. <coughs> so we should have the same leading digit and the same ending digit, right? Let's try to check. So when I talk about base 2, that's the most convenient. Let's start with that. So if I try to convert this number P, which is in decimal, into base 2. So how do we do that? Simple. You just successively divide the given number P by 2 note down the remainders and then you write down your remainders in reverse order that will give you the corresponding uh, binary value example if you take p as 30 for example the corresponding value will be 15 goes 0 times or remainder is 0 2 goes 7 times here remainder is 1 2 goes 3 times remainder is 1 again 2 goes 1 time remainder is 1 again so 1 again is not divisible it will stop so thus the required conversion will be for 30 it's going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 4 times 1 followed by 0. Also, one more thing in case of binary, the digits that we make use of for, for writing any number are only zeros and ones, can only be zeros and ones. Now, if he says the leading digit is A, the leading digit cannot be 0 anyways. So, it will have to be a 1. So, that means the number that we are looking at, P, the value of P, should be such that. When you convert that p into base 3 also, the leading digit should be 1. Convert that into base 5 also, leading digit should be 1. Are we getting this point? Because the leading digit is the same for all three bases. And firstly, we started with base 2 because binary is most convenient because there are only two digits which are possible, 0 and 1. And leading digit cannot be 0, thus it will have to be 1 only. I hope we are clear with this. Leading digit can't be... Uh, 0 so it had to be it has to be 1 however the last digit can be either 0 or 2 uh, sorry 0 or 1 it can be 0 or 1 so when will it be 0 when will it be 1 let's try to understand so if you want the units digit the last digit to be 0 please notice that the given number p has to be a multiple of 2 because only when the number is multiple of 2 when you convert it into binary you will get the last digit as 0 if it is not a multiple of 2, you will get the last digit as 1. So, I will take both the cases. Case 1, p is divisible by 2. Not divisible by 2, I will take it separately. Right? So, the last digit is 0. So, that means even when I try to convert this p into base 3, it should start with a 1, end with a 0. Similarly, it should start with a 1, in case of 5 also, end with a 0. If it is ending with a 0, even in case of 3, can I say the number p should be divisible by 3 also? Similarly, if it is ending with 0, in case of base 5, number p should be divisible by 5 also. So, that means effectively can I say p is divisible by 2, p is divisible by 3, p is divisible by 5 also. So, overall can I say p should be divisible by their LCM also. What is the LCM of 2, 3 and 5? It is 30. So, P should be divisible by 30 and P should be a number less than 50 somewhere it was given. 
So thus can I say if it is divisible by 30, there is only one possibility that we have the number p can be 30. I cannot take 60 because it will exceed 50. Let us verify. So if you take t as 30, okay, if you take t as 30, what is the binary equivalent of that? 2 goes 15 times, 0, 7 goes 1 times, 2 again 3, 1 time, 2 goes 1 time, 1. So it is 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 in binary. Okay. What is 30 in base 3? So when you have base 3 here, so it will go 10 times 0, it will go 3 times 1, 1 time 0. So 1, 0, 1, 0 in base 3. The leading digit and the ending digit are same. Similarly, when you convert 30 into base 5, 6 times 0, 1 time 1, 1, 1, 0. Again, you can see the leading digit and the ending digit are same. So one value is p equal to 30. But that is not the only value. We could also have the last digit in base 2 as 1 also. The leading is also 1, the last is also 1 in base 2. So that means in base 3 also it will be the same. Same thing in base 5 also. Correct? Now if you are getting 1 at the end, that means when you take the number p, you divide by 2, the first stage remainder has to be 1, isn't it? Previously, when we got this as 0, we concluded that p should be divisible by 2, divisible by 3, divisible by 5 because the remainder was 0. Here we are getting the remainder as 1 everywhere. So that means, can I say <coughs> here, p when divided by 2, it should give you 1 remainder, p when divided by 3 also should give you 1 remainder, p when divided by 5 should also give you 1 remainder. That means p when divided by the LCM 30 should also give you one remainder. So that means p will be of the form 30k plus 1 divisor into some quotient plus remainder. But again p there is a range with which is given less than 50. There is only one possible value that k can take k equal to 1. So 31 is the other value that we have. Quickly if you want to verify we may verify that. So 31, if you try to convert this into base 2, 15, 1, 7, 1, 3, 1, 1, 1. So it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 in base 2. 31, converting into base 3, 10 times 1, 3 goes 3 times 1, 3 goes 1 times 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Starting digit and leading digit, both are 1. Similarly for 5, 6 times 1. 1 time 1. So 1, 1, 1 in base 5. Leading and ending digit. Starting and ending digit both are 1. So thus, in this range, p less than 50, I see there are only two possible values. He is asking us, find the number of values that p can take. My answer is going to be 2. Okay. I hope we have followed the logic used in answering this particular question. So this was the question that I had for today. I hope you have followed it. So on that note, let me end the session here and uh, for more such content, please do subscribe us okay, and follow our channel. Thank you and uh, all the very best again.